hello back again with a new stream and the new book okay we'll just check whether the stream is working or not then we will start as always yeah it is working on youtube and it is working on as you can see from the title the name of the book but yeah i would be telling you in just some time as we start with the reading it is working on twitch as well let's just hear myself then we'll go ahead is it working or not it is working um it seems like it's working but it's not working but like it is working on twitch as well okay great it's working so we are starting with a new book let me start the recording and then we'll go ahead we are going to read getting past your past by Francine Shapiro the creator of EMDR I movement desensitization and reprocessing technique or therapy which is seen and uh, like from researches it has been proven to very be very successful very s- helpful in improving especially in trauma cases PTSD complex PTSD Francine Shapiro's discovery of EMDR is one of the most important breakthrough in the history of psychotherapy. True, very true. Said by Norman Deutsch, MD, author of The Brain That Changes Itself. Getting past your past, taking control of your life with self-help techniques from EMDR therapy by Francine Shapiro, PhD. Praise for getting past your past <laughs> okay we are not going to read the praises but you can go ahead and read them by pausing the video it's of course a very good book and hopefully helpful to me as well dedicated to shapiro's beloved husband bob welch chapter 1 running on automatic Why would a beautiful intelligent woman keep picking the wrong men and then when they try to break up with her throw herself on the floor cut clutching their leg begging them not to leave Ben is a su- Ben is a successful businessman why is he hit with anxiety whenever he has to make a presentation Stacy has been trying one therapist after another for years to discover why she has an almost constant feeling of dread fears of abandonment and an eating disorder Strangest of all, she has repeated images of the color red and a candle. It makes no sense to her, but it has been going on for as long as she can remember. Interestingly, there is a simple explanation for their problems that involve how the brain itself functions. In this book, we will explore both the reason for suffering and what we can do about it. Why we suffer. The truth is, we all suffer at one time or another. Situations arise all the time that affect us negatively, but when we continue to have pain long after the experience itself has passed, it is because the hard wiring of our brains influence our minds. Let's try the following experiment so you can see for yourself. I'll give you a single sentence and you just notice the first thing that pops into your mind. Roses are red. The odds are that the first thing to come up was violets are blue. For people born in US, it's basically the equivalent of a knee-jerk response. This is an important concept since mental responses are based on physical reactions. Your brain is programmed to respond in the same way as the rest of your body. Regardless of age or gender, when your knee is hit in a certain way, your leg will jerk. Similarly, regardless of intention, your mind also reacts automatically. For instance, when when is the t- last time you heard that rhyme? you probably learned it in the childhood so if you don't live with young children it was likely many many years ago but it came up automatically nonetheless 
these types of automatic responses can be wonderful and useful and show the power of our mind but they don't always serve us take a look at the sentences themselves your response to roses are red wasn't a critical evaluation of its meaning your mind just moved along with the response as it was as if it was true but roses aren't always red they are also yellow pink purple and most any color you can think of however the unexamined sentence looks just fine at first glance and how about the second one violets are blue are they really no actually they are purple but the line will come up whether it's true or not now probably the sentence didn't cause you any kind of distress but that same type of automatic response also causes a wide range of problem that disrupts happiness families and communities the same mind brain processes that allow us to recognize a rhyme or sing along with a tune we haven't heard in 20 years are the ones that also down us with in the misery of anxiety depression heartache and at times physical pain the nurses ri- nursery rhyme has even more to offer remember the line that comes after violets are blue sugar is sweet and so are you lovely sentiment and it all comes to mind automatically but as we all know why sugar is surely sweet people are lots more complicated everyone is a mixture of sweet sour and every flavor and variation under the sun at some point everyone is angry and sad jealous bitter hurt insecure happy or sweet and when we are we act accordingly one moment we cherish the one we are with and cover with them with kisses a day later we may explode and yell at them in, f- in frustration so basically some of what we have learned growing up is true but just as with all the other experiences we have had through childhood other things are not often as youngsters we can't tell the difference and when we take what we take to be real such as believing we are inferior because we are bullied or rejected or thinking we are responsible for our parents divorce are really just misperceptions nevertheless these experiences can have effect that come up automatically throughout the rest of our lives outside our conscious control every experience we have had in our life has become a building block in our inner world governing our reactions to everything and every person we encounter when we learn something the experience is physically stored within networks of brain cells called neurons these networks actually form our unconscious mind determining how our brain interprets the world around us and governing how we feel from moment to moment these memories include experiences that took place years ago and our conscious mind is often av- unaware that they have any impact on us at all but since the memories are physically stored in the brain they can pop up outside our control in response to roses are red just as they color our view of every new situation we encounter they can cause us to feel unattractive when we are not met when everyone else around us is happy and they can leave us feeling heartsick if someone leaves us even if we know consciously that the person is terrible for us and continuing the relationship would be a big mistake basically many of the feelings and actions that undermine our happiness are symptoms that stem from this memory system that forms the unconscious let's take the first case from page 1 why would a beautiful intelligent woman keep picking the wrong men and then when they try to break up with her throw herself on the floor clutching their legs begging them not to leave justine has no problem getting boyfriends her problem is keeping them now 25 years old she generally picks men with an edge who are emotionally unavailable then every time she gets into a relationship she begins acting clingy and a boyfriend eventually breaks up with her when this happens she begins to cry hysterically falling to her knees and putting her arms around the man's leg pleading with him not to leave her in therapy the cause of this was dragged back to something that happened on a sunday evening when she was 6 years old Justin was living with her parents in a two-story house. On that night there were a there was a severe thunderstorm causing her to become very frightened. Upstairs in her bedroom she began crying and yelling for her mommy and daddy to come to her. However, they were in the kitchen on the first floor. The storm drowned her out her screams and they didn't hear her. They never came to her rescue and she eventually cried herself to sleep. How could something as common as this be responsible for her problems? All of us have experienced loud storms sometime in childhood, but only some of us will remain negatively affected by it. 
we'll go into detailed re reasons for this in later chapters for now it's sufficient to know that when negative reactions and behaviors in the present can be tracked directly back to an earlier memory we define those memories as unprocessed meaning that they are stored in the brain in a way that still holds the emotion physical sensation and beliefs that we experienced earlier in life that stormy night justine was intensely intensely frightened as a child and had the belief that she was in danger her parents didn't come when she cried for them which also gave her the feeling that she would be abandoned if she really needed them this memory stored in her brain with the intense fear she experienced at 6 years old is stimulated whenever a boyfriend breaks up with her at this point she no longer functions as a mature and successful 25 year old but instead as a frightened little girl left alone in the dark we can see the connection given that the storm and a breakup are both associated with aloneness and abandonment as such she unconsciously experiences the breakup as being in danger we experience these types of connections all the generally the reason for all of the characteristics we love or hate in ourselves and the people around us it's simply part of the way the brain functions in order to make sense of the world but identifying the memory connection is just the first step in changing how we think act or feel it's not just understanding where something comes from but also knowing what to do about it that is important in the course of this book we will be exploring how to identify the memories that underlie personal and relationship problems what we can do to help manage them on our own and how to recognize when further professional help would be useful we'll also explore the workings of the mind the intricate connection that form our consciousness through stories contributed by some of the more than 70,000 clinicians worldwide who practice a form of therapy known as eye movement desensitization and reprocessing EMDR billions of people have been helped by the therapy over the past 20 years and many of them are giving detailed reports in this book in order to help demystify the change process as research has shown major changes can take place within even one EMDR reprocessing session the client's reports allow us a window into the brain since the connections they made answer so many questions about why we react to the world in different ways emdr therapy targets the unprocessed memories that contain the negative emotions sensations and beliefs by activating the brain's information processing system which will be explained in chapter 2 the old memories can then be digested meaning what is useful is learned what's useless is discarded and the memory is now stored in a way that is no longer damaging for instance Justin's clinician focused on the thunderstorm along with the feeling she had of being alone and in danger. Once the memory of the thunderstorm was processed, the childhood sensation of terror disappeared and were replaced by the feeling of safety and the belief that an, as an adult she could take care of herself. Along with that, the boyfriend problem resolved as a new sense of self resulting in, in her making different romantic choices. Of course there would be more memories that might have to be dealt with if justice Justin's parents had been generally abusive or neglectful but regardless of the number of memories involved basically we are entering into person's unconscious mind with this form of therapy in a way that can allow insights connection and change to occur rapidly within the reprocessing sessions what is the unconscious mind when most people think of the unconscious they think of psychoanalysis and movies that involve a freudian view of psychic conflicts and symbolic dreams and gestures from the psychoanalytic perspective it generally takes years of talk therapy and working through to gain insight and mastery over forces that are hidden from view This form of therapy can have great value but through it published first in 1900 and many things have changed since then. In the past century there have been new advances in neurobiological technologies that have expanded our ex understanding of what these forces actually are. The examination of the unconscious we are dealing with in this book is one that is based on workings of the brain itself. 
through an understanding of how experiences lay the physical groundwork for our emotional and physical reactions, we can determine how our stuck points and knee-jerk mental responses came about and what to do about them. For instance, let's take the second case. Ben is a successful businessman. Why is he hit with anxiety whenever he has to make a presentation? Here's how he described it. As long as I can remember, I have had anxiety about doing any performance in front of a group of people. My palm sweats, my voice becomes unpredictable and my heart beats fast and I have thoughts like, I'm an idiot, I can't do this, everyone will hate me. It sometimes felt as though my life was at risk, sounds ridiculous but it was so true. As I went through school, there were many times in the normal course of events when I had to make public presentations. In my professional career, the same thing happened. I always made it through these events, but not happily. In fact, I suffered before and after every event and tediously went over every detail with my loved ones, which, as you might imagine, did not delight them. No matter what I tried, nothing seemed to fix this problem. I tried many types of therapy. Sometimes it seemed a little better, but it always came roaring back. Ben entered into EMDR therapy and used a variety of procedures that we learn in this book to identify the source of his problem and change his reactions. Here's what he discovered. It turns out the cause was something that happened to me when I was no more than three and a half years old. I was walking with my grandfather on his farm in western North Carolina. My memory here is as if I was looking up like a very small child. I don't remember chattering away to my grandfather, but it, if family stories can be trusted, I probably was. We met a strange man on the road. He was old, bent, angry looking, with very hairy nostrils. He said to my grandfather in his mountain drawl, Well, how do he, if I had a young gun, talked as much as that, un, I would drown him in the creek. I slipped behind my grandfather's denim-covered leg, peered up the man's nostrils and shut up. I knew that unwanted kittens were in fact drowned in the creek. It did not seem safe to chatter in front of strangers. So this child's movement of terror set the groundwork for his problem. The memory became stored in his brain and set him up for failure. I did my first book report in third grade in front of my beloved Miss Nignor a young pretty first year teacher. I loved Miss Ninor and was very proud of the fact that my book report was three pages long. I had worked very hard on it. I had also developed a slight stutter which lasted all of about six months before leaving as mysteriously as it began. My parents had handled this pretty well and I wasn't aware of being self-conscious about it. I had daydreams of Miss K pra praising me and telling the class what a great report I had done. Instead, Miss K stayed in the back of the room in out of control laughter during my whole report. As I shuffled through my report, the stutter getting worse as I went. I thought, I'm an idiot. Then two years later, I was recruited at the last minute to do part in a school play. I was in middle of the first act when I forgot my lines. I stood in middle of the stage stock still. I thought, everyone will hate me. I've ruined the play. I'm an idiot. Notice that Ben had these same thoughts going through his mind 40 years later when he needed to make a presentation at work. I'm an idiot. I can't do this. Everyone will hate me. He had no idea before EMDR therapy why he was feeling and thinking that way. He did not have a visual image of his grandfather's farm or the book report or the school play. He just had the feelings and thoughts that went along with it. This was an automatic response to an external trigger, just as much as roses are red, causes violets are blue. Nothing exists in a vacuum. Reactions that seem irrational are often exactly that, but irrational doesn't mean that there is no reason for them. It means that the responses come from a part of our brain that is not governed by the rational mind. The automatic reactions that control our emotions come from neural associations within our memory networks that are independent of our higher reasoning power. That's why you can watch in amazement as you do something you know you will regret later or get drawn to the wrong people or feel hurt by someone you have no respect for or yell at a loved one with little reason or feel powerless to shake a depression brought on by something that seems inconsequential. It's irrational but understandable and more important, it's fixable. While genetics play an important role in general, the basis of the suffering it's, is the way our memories of past experiences are stored in the brain, and this can be changed. 
happily appropriately stored memories are also the basis of joy and mental health later on we will explore more about how the brain and memories work we are all in this together we are all on a continuum of suffering and happiness of sickness and health of families who contributed to our problems and those who were supportive and loving likewise the kinds of experience we have encountered range from the usual ones of childhood humiliations failures rejections and arguments to the major events needing to needed to diagnose post traumatic stress disorder psd such as major accidents physical or emotional abuse combat or natural disasters in addition for someone to be diagnosed with ptsd they have to have symptoms such as intrusive thoughts sleep dip- disturbances such as nightmares or recurrent dreams anxiety hyperarousal where they are extremely alert for danger and may jump at loud noises or numbing where they feel shut down and disconnected they also try to stay away from it but thoughts of it keep popping up anyway people with ptsd clearly have the negative experiences stored in their brain in a way that is highly disturbing so when a combat vet- veteran with ptsd thinks back to an event that has happened in iraq in or afghanistan 3 years ago he can feel it is in his body with the thoughts and images that were there at that time of the event the veteran who came back from the vietnam war can think of something that happened more than 30 years ago and the same thing happens a marine who has gone through many tours of duty and witnessed many casualties can be haunted by when he thinks about it he can feel the same helplessness pain sorrow and anger he felt at that time and he responds to the world around him with those emotions someone who was raped a year ago or molested 50 years ago has ptsd the past is present when they think of the incident it t- it can feel as though it's happening all over again or they can be fearful and anxious when around certain people or places but regardless of how long ago something happened and regardless of how long symptoms mm. have been there it doesn't need to be permanent the research is clear on that also important although a major trauma such as robbery or violence is a diagnosis of ptsd a number of recent studies have demonstrated that everyday life experiences such as relationship problems or unemployment can produce just as many and sometimes even more symptoms of ptsd this has important implication for all of us it shows that there is no clear separation between kinds of events nor is there a clear separation between symptoms similar to those who suffer from PT- ptsd we all have had the experience of feeling anxious fearful jumpy or shut off from others thoughts we can't get out of our heads guilt or disturbing dreams sometimes those reactions are based on a current situation and we need to think about it and get the information needed to handle it for others the symptoms go away when the situation changes but for many of us these feelings occur often on for no apparent reason these are generally signs that there are underlying under unprocessed memories causing them these memories can be identified and treated so it's useful to remember that whatever the persistent negative emotion belief or behavior that has been bothering you it's not the cause of suffering it's the symptom the likely cause is the memory that is pushing it our memories are the basis of both negative symptoms and of mental health the key difference is the way the memories are stored in the brain if they are unprocessed they can cause us to overreact or act in a way that hurts us or those around us if they are processed we are able to react in ways that serve our loved ones and ourselves well why me those of us who were raised by parents who were unsupportive or abusive have an idea of the kind of experiences that might be causing some of our problems others have read stories of really disturbed families and messed up childhoods and believe that's not me i had a good family so it makes no sense for me to feel the way i do however Sometimes even the most supportive family members who believe they are doing the best for us we can find ourselves locked ourselves locked in a web of sy- symptoms and pain that we don't understand and sometimes the search for answers in therapy can lead us astray because the clinicians does not have a clear idea about how memory works for instance let's take a look at our third example why does stacy have an almost constant feeling of dread fears of abandonment and an eating disorder strangest of all she has repeated images of the color red and a candle 
It makes no sense to her, but it has been going on for as long as she can remember. Stacy tried one therapist after another for years. There are more than 100 different kind of therapy and each therapist brings a personal perspective which also changes the way the treatment is applied. Sometimes it's difficult to people to find the right treatment or the right therapist. Also clinical situations can be complicated because sometimes a childhood event is so disturbing that it can completely overwhelm the brain's natural ability to process it and it's either not stored at all or becomes completely cut off so that person can't remember it. That was one of Stacy's problem. After years of therapy with little change in symptoms, she arrived at a therapist who tried a variety of avenues and also got no results. Since Stacy had no idea where the problem came from and had abandonment issues, intimacy problems, eating difficulties, panic and anxiety, her clinician said to her, it really sounds like you have been sexually abused. In addition, because she had recurrent images of the color red and a candle, he suggested that maybe it was ritual abuse because those images would fit right into satanic worship ceremonies. As you can imagine, that made her anxiety even worse. So for two years, they probed her life story, trying without success to find memories of ritual abuse. Since she was still suffering, Stacy tried another therapist where she learned about EMDR because she didn't have to recall and of she didn't have recall of anything she consciously felt was connected to the feelings of dread, anxiety, fears of abandonment and her eating disorder. The therapist targeted the symptom that could most directly lead to the underlying memory, the image of the color red in a candle. After the appropriate preparation, during the assessing procedures, images from her childhood emerged and she saw herself at about five years old. It was her birthday. Her daddy gave her a scented candle for her room and then they went off in the car to her birthday luncheon. As they are driving along singing together, a car runs a stoplight and crashes into them, killing her father. So if her father died next to her on the way to her birthday luncheon, the symptoms become explainable. As you can see from this, you could easily develop eating disorder, abandonment issues and persistent anxiety. But sometimes memory can be less misleading because they can simply be images that confirm to the feelings we have. For instance, children can believe that something bad happened to them because they heard a story or something or saw something on television. Think of all the children who develop nightmares after watching frightening movies. Was Stacy really in the car when her father was killed? Stacy knew that her father had died in a car accident, but she has had no memory of being with him. You don't know unless you get permission. She called up her mother and asked, Mom, is it true? Was I with dad when he died? Her mother said, Well, yes, dear, you were. But we thought you didn't want to talk about it because you never mentioned it. So even though Stacy had a very loving mother who wanted to protect her and no direct memory of her father's death, death. She had years of symptoms that seemed totally irrational. Now they made sense. And more important, they disappeared after the memory was processed. It's important to remember that we don't have to undergo a major trauma such as a father's death or a car accident to develop symptoms that last for years. For instance, Janice came in ther for therapy with a very long history of taking too many antacids. At this point, it was life-threatening because she was taking them so often that they were practically ripping up her stomach. She also had no memory of why it had started. She only knew she was horrified of getting sick into her stomach. The clinician used the EMDR procedures. You will be learning to find the sources of these feelings. What Janice then remembered was being in grade school when the girl next to her in class vomited. Trying to stop herself, the girl put her hand over her mouth and the vomit went sideways into Janice's hair. Janice went, running out of the room, feeling panicky, humiliated and unclean. This was the memory at the bottom of the antacid abuse. After processing the memory, she no longer felt the need for them. So... If there is a symptom, the message is that there is usually some experience that caused or is contributing to it. Something happened, whether we consciously remember it or not. Although we have come to rely heavily on pills for feeling of well-being, many times they only mask the symptom. The cause of these problems is not typically an innate neurological difficulty or purely biochemical. 
Of course, our genetic makeup plays an important role and can cause us to react strongly to certain experiences. Sometimes we can inherit predispositions to a variety of vulnerable states such as depression or anxiety. However, even the in these cases, certain types of life experiences are generally needed to cause distress. Basically, our genetic makeup combines with our experience in ways that can make life go on automatic pilot. The other message is that just because the symptoms are long lasting or severe, it doesn't necessarily mean there was a major trauma. Even seemingly minor events from an adult perspective can be the cause. The bottom line is that line is that from the vantage point of a child it felt traumatic at the time and the memory was logged into the brain these experiences may have happened long ago and we may not recognize how much they actually affected us but the negative emotions behaviors feelings and beliefs that cause chronic problems generally can be tracked back to these unprocessed memories in that way the past stays present the book will provide techniques that can help you make sense of symptoms and identify their cause we will also demonstrate ways in which your thoughts, feelings and reactions can be transformed, lowering distress and increasing confidence and comfort. The goals of this book. There are thousands of things that send us looking for answers, whether in book or through therapy. Some people simply need information to do with a new event in their life. Others recognize that something is blocking them. They are being pushed into doing things they don't want to do. Or they are being doing things they know would benefit them. This book is about understanding the wh why in your life and in those around you. More important, it's also about understanding what you can do about an uncertainty. It's not a question of will I suffer some time in my life and in how many ways. Some of us move rapidly through certain kind of pain but not through others. Some of us are joyful while others feel joy rarely or not at all. This book is about understanding why we are who we are and learning what we can do about pain and negative reactions that don't serve us. It's also about identifying and opening the blocks to feelings of happiness and well-being. By using a number of the techniques, you can decide for yourself how, s how to make the best choices for your future. I also want to emphasize that while we often find that experiences from childhood are the root cause of many psychological problems, this book is not about blame. As a child in a world of adults, everyone had experiences of not being in control, being ignored, or feeling less important than other people. We will explore in later, chap later chapters why psychological symptoms and problems develop for some and not for others. But it is important to remember that all of these things occurred before we had any choice or power. As children, we didn't ask for what happened to us. And whatever kind of parenting we had, our parents are also also are who they are because of their own life experiences, including the way they were raised. Basically, we want to assign blame. We generally have to go back through.